All right, this is it. The time is now. Box number 12 is the final box of the mother load. It is not the final box I ordered, but I thought it would be fitting to leave it for last. It is the third and final box from at Matt L, Caracast 529 of the Discord. So I'll have to see what we got. So this is similar to the first box I opened from the slot from Phase 1 Comics and Games in that it's clearly just chock full of cards to me because it's only a medium fly rate box, but it's, um, let me check again here to make sure, it's almost 14 pounds. So this is kind of like a hoarder's dream or a Pirates CSG fanatic's dream like me because it's a box that's just like, it's almost just like a, like a solid brick of Pirates CSG cards, which is amazing. So, let's get into it. This is also, I'm saving, I saved this for last also because this might be the order or the box with the most brand new stuff for me in it, I think. It should be, I think. So. Alrighty, let's see. This is great. Oh wow, there's like top loaders galore too. Holy shit. I didn't expect that. Thank you, Matt. Got like tons of extra hard case top loader sleeves. That's really nice. That'll be useful for trading. So I probably will be able to do some trades. I don't have a lot of wants, so probably not too many, but hopefully a few uh, in 2021 or 2022, so. This, this is exciting. This is new for me. So let me figure out how to get this one open here. Oh yeah, here they come. First bust I've ever gotten, actually. Calico Cat, 2004 WizKids. So, very nice. So one of the biggest reasons I haven't collected the bus is because they're not usable in games. They're just not, it's just really just like a weird random collector's item. So, anyway, but uh, he had a few on his uh, spreadsheet that he's made public uh, for the stuff he was selling. And I think they were like 10 bucks each, so... I was like, you know, I don't have any of the busts, and like, I think eventually it'll be something I want to collect, so I might as well get started now, even if I only get two in the in the short term, so, so that's nice. It's almost like they're a little more lightweight than I expected, actually. I did see most or all of them, whatever Captain Randy's got at his house in uh, Las Vegas, so I have seen most of them. Countess Diana Dune is the other one. This one is kind of epic, actually, the way she's got, like, this stance or whatever. So, pretty cool. Another bust. All these are from uh, Spanish main characters and lore. So, so first two busts. Make sure I put these in a nice, nice spot somewhere so they're not buried. I'll just put them off to the side for now. All right. Very nice. So right off the bat, a couple things I've never had before. I think this is new as well. HMS Mirage, I can see. I actually don't have that ship. So it's a new one for me. Looks like another... Ooh, Independence, yes. Oh, this is exciting. Yeah, this will be the most exciting lot for me as a personal collector, just because I don't have some of it. And a few of these things I've wanted for quite a while. This is massive stack top loader. It's really nice. All right, let's get into it. No, let's do. Let's just do this one first. So, Independence is a special edition Mysterious Island ship I didn't have. So, not a bad ship overall. It's not. It's not great or anything really. Uh, plus one of boards. 
plus two against subs. So cargo, move, cost, ability, all kind of meh. But the cannons are, are very good. So, so that's what kind of redeems it. Not an amazing ship. Kind of somewhat comparable to the Congress from uh, Rise of the Fiends. Somewhat similar, uh, or pretty similar, Amer American Four Masters. So this is one of the special edition ships that came in the the uh, SE boxes. So, which I don't think I've opened any of those SE boxes from uh, from Mysterious Islands. I really want the Tasmanian Devil. That's in my like top five or top ten most wanted game pieces. Um, not quite number one. That'd probably be. I don't even know. Actually, I don't want to say it if I don't know for sure, but anyway. So it's nice to have the independence though, get one of those MI SE box ships, which is really cool. And then I'll pop this one open here. Got another package of mega cards. Similar to that Ocean Edge whole lot. Oh boy. Yeah, this is fun. Alright, let's not get into that yet. Oh you already see it. Alright. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be so visible. I didn't see the camera angle until I set it down. It's like, okay. So, Delusion. So, you know I already got those Plunder Packs. So, so I'll have some Delusions up for trade. Which, since they're the most commonly available 10 Master nowadays, I may not probably have to trade like two or three Delusions to get to get a, like a different 10 Master. Other than maybe the Bouch one. Could be maybe one for one, but probably not even anymore. Bouch one used to be the cheapest 10 master for a while, especially at auction, but delusion with the plunder packs at Hills is just it's so much more readily available. So, but this is still the coolness factor is still off the charts with this thing. Glow in the dark, most expensive ship in the game, tons of keywords. It's got eternal built in. So very cool ship. Um, maybe I'll even, I got so many delusions now. I think I got like four extra. I got so many I might make one of them a prize for like a, a relatively, I don't know about large, but kind of like a higher stakes tournament. If I could, I don't know if I'll be able to host a tournament anytime soon, but maybe, maybe now that I'm kind of settled, now that we're kind of settled in the Pac Northwest near Seattle, maybe if I can get a good enough game group going, if I could uh, put a delusion up for a prize, no promises, but we'll, we'll see. But anyway, just some, just some random thoughts. And uh, kind of just staring at it. It's, Ten Master is just amazing, so kind of fun to just savor the moment and just be in awe of it, I guess you could say. So, gotta love the stuff. It's just great. So HMS Mirage is another new one for me. So anything new, I'm, I'm much more likely to kind of stare at. And I may mean, already have a delusion, but, um, but like, I'm much more likely to like review things because it's like, oh wow, I've never played a physical copy of this ship, which is rare because I've played so much. I think I've probably played almost every ship in my punch collection, which is probably 800 ships or 850 or 900, whatever it is. Um, so to see a to hold a physical ship I haven't played in any game ever is pretty rare. So so it's usually only the newest ships to my collection go in that category. So. This one is solid, uh, probably a tiny bit better than the Independence, maybe, just because she's a little more versatile. One more cargo than mass, solid cannons, plus one to cannon rolls against targets without other mass, which is decent ability, solid speed. So, overall, for the English, not like a really great option, uh, or not a, not a great gunship for them, but pretty solid. Um, in the grand scheme of the game, maybe about average or slightly... Um, Slightly above average, just given the reverse power creep and stuff like that. So, not a bad, not a bad ship, not a bad entry for the English. One thing I think is unique about her compared to most ships, she's got like a somewhat uh, white hull or off white, like light pinkish, and then she's got the red sails, the dark red or maroon sails. So, not many ships have that color scheme. So, so it's pretty unique. Makes her stand stand out a lot in terms of her uh, physical appearance so as if i didn't have enough ocean dutch mega cards <laughs> so skipping stone a couple of those two hermes two shalvella angelica oh two of that one too two of each ghost walker and then mystic so so some of these will definitely be prizes or some kind of giveaway things like that some will go up for trade things of that nature and 
the dragons, I don't know. I feel like I want to just hold on to the dragons for various reasons, but... Anyway, so... Because I broke one of my... I think I broke an Angelica or whatever, and then for proxies, proxying in for, like, Smaug or something. <laughs> um, Terex has a Smaug custom dragon, so... Anyway, I'll try not to ramble too much, because I know this is a really big lot, so I should probably, should probably hurry up, actually. <laughs> It's going to take like all day to go through this if I don't go a little bit faster. So. Okay. Alright. So I'll just kind of try to whip through a little faster here. So, Yeah, so this, <laughs> some of this is still just like a massive bulk lot. So it's going to be kind of similar to the Phase 1 Comets and Games orders uh, order. Uh, but it's going to basically, I'm pretty sure it should be less cards but more like higher overall average rarity so like phase one comments and games is just like pure mass like pure bulk like like hundreds of uncommon like hundreds of comments and uncommons like very few rares this will have a little bit more rare stuff but less uh ships and cards overall but anyway and right off the bat a couple of, couple of rare crew from fire and steel including victor de alva one of the best spanish name crew in the whole game Barstow, Roberto Santana, four of those, which is nice. Uh, give away to some new Spanish players. Pretty versatile, good Spanish name crew. And then we'll just kind of zip through it here. Uh, some fire and steel ships. Uh, I figure out where to put all this stuff. I love the way this is packaged. Like, it's just, I love these little, I love these. I'm going to have to, like, reuse these. These would be good for trade, too. It's like a plastic... Oh, man. It reminds me of my prior addictions to Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and baseball cards, which are long since dormant and replaced in full by Pirate's Addiction, but, but it's really nice to see these kind of packaging types again. Oh, this is beautiful. I love this. Five Master Galore. This is a gorgeous sight. Foresight. HMS Apollo, Neptune, Monique, and USS Concordia. One of those eternal godships. So, all the five masters except for 002 uh, from Fire and Steel. So, really nice. Really great. So, kind of, I splurged a little, a little too much maybe on some of these orders, but couldn't help it. This is going to be, this is like giving away to new players galore. Dominic Freda is an amazing Spanish name crew. Griffin, probably let new players proxy the LE version of Griffin in uh, with the common version. And then this one is, if you don't let Griffin get proxied, S-Board's not that good, which makes this next crew card probably even better because both of them are so usable. Uh, Captain Arzur, French sack captain, and then Gus Schultz, to pony Eternal for the Americans. Uh, Rise of the Fiends has grown on me over the years. Um, it's still not one of my favorite sets. It's kind of, uh, I, I think, still kind of one of the worst sets in a lot of ways. But but it's actually kind of playable. It's actually not that bad. If you think it's really horrible or as bad as Fire and Steel, I would urge to take a closer look and just zip through the set at some point and be like, wow, the Aqualon, just as an instant example, is way better than a lot of the ships from from Fire and Steel. It's not, like, great. It's not that good, really, but but it's still better than a lot of Fire and Steel ships. Lady Washington, not great, but if this was in Fire and Steel, I feel like it would t cost, like, 10 or 11 points, which is silly. Maybe she should cost 6 or, f or 5, but, like, Fire and Steel, she would be even more mediocre and, and boring and annoying. So. so, Rise of the Fiends has a lot of flaws. It's not... wouldn't rate it highly as a set, but it's, uh... It's kind of grown over the years. It kind of discounted it a little too much in the past. So I'm not trying to be a huge fan of it or anything, but it's not it's not horrendous in every way or anything. So And, uh, yeah, so we got even more. Dominic Freda. And again, some Fire and Steel with Lenoir. One of the, one of the highlights of Fire and Steel is a four-point canceller, the French Lenoir, because the hostile, which really shouldn't subtract a point, but that's how Whiskers did it, so... This is good to give away to new players, but also kind of like, I don't know if I want to, because like, they're going to 
<laughs> they're going to use this against me and uh, use a face down four point canceler against me. And it's like, uh. I'll probably give some away or let it, you know, be used. But anyway. Uh, and then speaking of Eternal, with Gus Schultz, I also got the one point Ralph David Eternal. Ooh, here we go. This is, oh, this is a great lot. I'm a player's player. Like, I'm a, I'm a hardcore player. So this is, this is exciting. And this, Ralph David and now Hermione Gold, this is a good example of why Rise of the Fiends can be pretty, pretty damn good, actually. Even, even in gameplay. Uh, Hermione Gold, one of only three crew in the game. Captain and Helmsman built in. Perfect for hybrids. Um, or even just gold runners. Um, and gunships, of course. So, especially for hybrids. So five of those. So that's really nice for trade bait, uh, player trade bait, and also just uh, lending out or giving new players in general. So one of the better name crew in the game, along with their Mysterious Islands version, which is also quite good, Captain World here. So anyway, she's one of my favorite uh, characters, basically. She's one of my favorite people in the game, favorite factions in English. And her Mysterious Islands version was one of my first like named crew I played with all the time. So definitely like her a lot. And then Calico Cat, you saw the bust of her. And then, so this one, Rise of the Fiends version, is based, uh, very, very similar to the Spanish main version. It's supposed to be three points. It's a misprint typo, so it should be three points for SAT. She's got Loyal Pirate, which the Spanish main version, of course, doesn't have. But so it's really nice. Yeah, this thought is, it's good for giving a way to new players. It's going to, some of the stuff I give away, it's going to instantly make the... So the new player is competitive right away, which is cool. So, or at least in terms of like uh, crew selection. So, all right, now you see the bulk of it, so that's exciting. Oh, this is just solid cards right there. The whole bottom row is just solid. This is great. Um, yeah, I gotta go faster. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna speed this up here. <laughs> so we get in the bulk of this nice lot. Epic lot. Yeah, it's fun. To, it's fun to get duplicate name crew. It's really nice for new players to have like access to this stuff. So John Saley, I kind of forget about him sometimes. French L Mover, and then Commander Spencer Portland is a very good English named crew. SAT with crew protection built in. Cristal del Obispo, Tima Columba, Charlemagne. Yeah, you can see the quantity or the quality is better than uh, the Phase One order because I splurged on the rares a bit more. Um, of course, really good defensive ability in the French, French four master there. This is wild. This is this is really big order actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, French ships from David Jones Curse, including the rare Rochefort. Sir Toya Brandywine. Whoa! Ooh, this is what I needed. Oh, here we go. This is where I, this is where I splurged a bit. They weren't, like, overpriced, but I, I spend more than I normally would on, like, single cards here. So Screaming Mimi is the last piece of the Davy Jones Curse Super Rares that I didn't have. This is my first copy of this. This is really exciting. So this is a really unique card, too, because, like, the artwork's kind of minimalistic. It's mostly just a face, and it's, like, the white, like, mist or wispy smoke, whatever it is. And you can see the flavor text behind so it's an L mover for the cursed links to the Banshee's Whale, which is not a very good ship. It's actually a common ship. So I think I bought, I think the way this super rare pack happened for me, I, I got punched copies of the Mistwalker and Calypso, or not, uh, Behemoth, sorry, not Calypso, in, uh, in like a lot or something, or maybe from like a seller just selling those. I'm in trading, something like that, or even maybe a trade, and uh, and then I think I got the Red Skull separate, the UT from the Super Rare pack, and then so then I had three out of four from two transactions. I'm pretty sure that's how it worked. So I think this is my third, like purchase, to assemble the four game pieces from this Super Rare pack, which is you know not optimal, but that's kind of just how it's worked out. And I think I got a really good deal or trade on, on those other three. So, so it's totally worth it. Uh, worth the wait, I guess you could say. So never seen this card in real life. So some say she's nothing more than a mad woman, but others know that she's a spirit forced to spend eternity haunting the sea 
and seeking revenge on those in uniform, those who let her death go unnoticed. So, I used to have a cursed L mover. These were the translucent or transparent cards from uh, Davy Jones Curse. So, very nice to finally get this one. That completes my Davy Jones Curse Super Rares. I think the other three are all in New York, so it's kind of split, but that's fine. And then this, this I splurged on. So, I think I didn't have any of the Davy Jones Curse LEs, limited editions. So these are my first three. Um, so these are pretty unique ships too. Not always in a good way, but El Pluton, plus El Tour Base Movement, she have all her masts. So LLS Speed with a Helmsman. So neat, but obviously the cargo and guns are lacking to really do much of anything with that speed. Um, El Pluton seems to have emerged from the underworld itself. No one is sure how she is able to float unless allowed to by the gods themselves. Moorhound. This one's kind of a horrible English ship, actually. Honestly, this could be five points, and it wouldn't be a problem. It wouldn't be overpowered or anything, so. Ghost ship is overpriced, but this is like, this is like overpriced to an extreme. I don't, I don't even know. I don't know how this happens, but. Oh, well. No ship has ever been recorded as the Moorhound yet, so I swear the English ship has fired upon them. All right. Salem, this is, uh, I actually have a soft spot for this one, so I'm really excited to get this one. I think this is one of the underrated American ships in the game. It's not, like, wicked good, but probably, I think it's probably because it's an LE, and it's so rare, and not, not a ton of people have this, probably, so, so it kind of flies under the radar a little bit. So, Curse Group may use their abilities on this ship. Not too useful, um, especially because they don't have, they don't have a lot of great new crew anyway, and then the eight-point cost limits what you can really do with the curse name crew on this one, but um, but the cargo, the speed, the cannons are all usable, so nothing super fancy, but a unique ship and a, a cool one, solid addition for the Americans overall. The Salem was sunk by a wave almost immediately after leaving Boston, yet she docked in New Orleans with Tabitha McWarren. Nice. All right, so three of the Davy Jones Curse limited editions. Uh, not for trade or sale, so <laughs> just gonna kind of preempt that. I should probably should have probably should have said that more often during these videos. But um, that being said, a, a solid chunk of this will be going up for trade. It's just gonna take some time, and then because of navy stuff, I may not be able to trade for months on end at random intervals. But oh well, I'll I'll, I'll mention that before I disappear. So at least I plan to if I'm able to. So this is fun. So Boston's Bane. I think I had a couple extra of these way back when I opened two 18-pack boxes of Mysterious Islands back in, like, 2011, uh, but then I traded them away, so it's kind of ironic to get some extras of these. So, so yeah. Um, really annoying defensive ability. Kind of like the Fallen Angel from uh, Davy Jones' Curse, just with uh, one less card space. And mercenary instead of Curse, of course. Okay. Yeah, this is an exciting lot. This is just great. This is why I saved this for last. You can really tell why at this point. So, These are good ships, too. I mean, Eroica, SAT built-in, Ray Publicane. I think this one's underrated. Solid, little pesky uh, support gun ship. So these ones are kind of meh, but that's fine. So two of Brandy Wine, not bad, not bad. trying to have the piles fall back the way I want them to. Wow, this lot is this lot is bunk. As Captain Randy would say. This is bunk. More rares. Count Gustav. Ooh, Tiffany. Yay. Fun. Okay. I'll explain in a second. So EA, Count Gustav. Very nice. He was one of the last mercenary new crew I got, actually, with my like regular collection. So So this is Eileen Bridget O'Brien. From Mysterious Islands, and if you've heard the podcast with Tiffany O'Brien, you'll know this This is basically her uh, in the game. So she finally got a game piece in 2006, and then uh, she came back for Savage Shores in 2008. Uh, the name crew, Tiffany was involved in between there too, of course. Um, so then I just met up with her uh, like five days ago or whatever to play a game uh, in Bellevue. So that was really awesome, and uh, hopefully we'll meet again for more stuff uh and uh this crew is actually 
it's okay. It's not as good as the Savage Shores version, but, um, but anyway, really cool to see, because I haven't seen my copies in New York, so it's kind of funny, like, seeing this now, now that I've actually met her. It's, it's, it's pretty funny, actually. So, and she already has, she definitely already has this, but anyway, with her family imprisoned in England, or by England, and their land given to the gold, given to the golds, oh, this is interesting. O'Brien vowed revenge on all involved. With Nemo's technology, Irish wealth in the New World, and a crew of dedicated freedom fighters, O'Brien is taking her fight against England to the sea. So, interesting. Very interesting. I'll just ask uh, Tiffany if she had input over the flavor text and, like, lore behind this this character that's named after her. So, anyway. All right. So, moving on. Kind of random order here let's see it's gonna be a long process to organize all this christian fior one of the absolute best crew in the game so a canceller with expatriate so you can use his abilities on any ship basically or pretty much any ship so yeah i've already done a miniature review of him uh which you can still find on my website actually i saved it for miniature trading so if you don't fully grasp why he's one of the best crew in the game um Christian Fior, Pirates of Ben, should uh, should elaborate. Ibrahim Ozat, really good crew for Ten Masters, actually. S board with Expatriate, love putting him on the Savage Shores or Return to Savage Shores Ten Masters. But he could he could he does well on like the Delusion as well, sort of. Um, it's kind of because uh, then Expatriate messes with Eternal, but whatever. Uh, let's see, Prussian Crown, another rare Five Master. Let's see. I'll try to go faster, but this is just such a great lot. The qu the quality is off the charts. It's a huge lot, but then it's like really, really great stuff too. So this is a great crew for two for Deucey Chads and Captain Mission. So three of that's really neat. Uh, Pacificum, Auckland, Amanila, Amanila. Let's see. That one's not as good of a crew for two for, but all day. Yeah, the Five Masters from Mysterious Islands were kind of underwhelming. It's, it's one of the worst sets for Five Masters ships, actually, just to be totally honest. Uh, Stevens is an exception to that. So, that, that's a neat one. Kind of an odd ship, if you will, but definitely a good one. Uh, cheerleadership. Espadone is quite good, actually. Egan, I love. Bellevue. So, this one, this one is funny. Because um, I think they probably named this after Bellevue, Washington. I didn't really catch on to that until recently, but that's probably where that came from. Uh, let's see. Kodiak, Shinji Smith, IUT, Nemo's Charts. Very nice. Ooh, here we go. More excitement. This is hype. Okay. Speaking of super rare packs that are assembled in random order because I collect weird and usually try to get deals on super rare packs where sometimes I spend less money collecting them over the course of five or seven years building them separately rather than uh, just buying the pack all at once for a higher price. <laughs> um, we've got the two sea monsters from Mysterious Islands, Kadera and Shai Hulud. So these are brand new for me. Uh, very exciting. And uh, so I already had Queen Teresa Pavone. And I still don't have Nemo's plans, so I still need that one. So kind of the opposite of how I got the uh, D.B. Jones Curse Pack. But anyway, so, so this is really exciting to get those. I'm going to set those kind of in a separate spot, but those are the mega cards for now. Alrighty, let's move on before I get bogged down again. <laughs> so I'll get into Ocean's Edge. Let me kind of flip these over so I can see them. See what crew they actually are. Got some some spare sea creatures. Talk about new player galore. El Phantasma. Anybody, any new players I teach that want to play the Cursed, they can get Mr. Glowy, glowy Eyes. Five of those. Five points. Sack Captain. Really good. Davy Jones. All powerful. This just... This doesn't really... I don't think this goes for a lot on eBay, but... I don't know. I, I place a lot of value on this this card, personally. I know it's a rare from, like, a super common set, so it's not that rare, but I don't know. This, this, 
this holds at least as much weight to me as HMS Grand Temple and Divine Dragon in terms of like value and trading rarity value and I don't know. I just it's just really special. There's some sentimentality I guess in it because I've used him a lot in like old games like 2011 to 2013, but all powerful links to all cruise ships. Number 016 from Ocean's Edge, just really iconic, I think. So, I don't know. Not to try to talk the price up, but I just I think this is a really special card. It is to me at least. So, anyway, let's see what else we got. Deliverance. So, I've been using that one lately, my new copy of it. So, that's exciting. Really good Fi Master, as I've already mentioned in the same video. Griffin. This is great for new players too. Pirate Griffin with Captain and Reroll, HMS Victoria, pretty darn good. English Five Master, the King John, four of those, it looks like. Stack these piles up here. We're not even, we're barely halfway through this first column of cards. Holy shit. All right, HMS Snipe, Lord Thomas Gun, Triple Rares. Let's see what else. Al Corzado. Ocean's Edge version, of course. Serpente. It's a really good 